This is the Business Stuff Podcast. This is where I will share the lessons I've learned from advising thousands of businesses over almost 30 years. Each episode will give you practical insight to allow you to learn from other people's mistakes. I'll be pulling in experts from our team and the world of business, and together we'll make sure your business is giving you what you want. My name is Martin, and this is the Business Stuff Podcast. Hi, it's Martin from the Accelerator team. I'm here with Jack again. Hi, Jack. Hello. I see you going for the lazy option today. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I just couldn't be bothered. Yeah. You know. Yeah, last thing on a Monday. Leaving the special effects all out on show there. Uh, yeah, James can take this out and post, can't he? Yeah, we've, we've got a budget for that. <laughs> um, today we're talking about the Orbed model. So this is a favourite of mine. I, re- I really do like the Orbed. And, and just as a, as a micro introduction, it's a, a model of behaviour for in the, like personal behaviour which I summarise as above the line thinking and below the line thinking. But do you want to do a slightly better job? Well, I thought, you thought you'd already done it. That well, was what, what's perfectly what's fine. I think it's important to know, as you said, it's a behavioural tool and uh, a lot of people assume that that's just aimed at a very specific part of a company, like aimed at the leadership, like the leadership of the ones that have to drive all of this sort of stuff. So this is a leadership based tool or for your rising stars but actually yeah it's something that everyone in the firm arguably should be adopting everyone yeah. in the business should have it and it yeah it's a very much a, a case of above the line below the line thinking so we've got which is glass half full glass half empty yeah well, it's not really because actually it's not about positivity is it it's no it's although it's, positive people are more likely to be above the line thinkers I, I say would. it's more positive thinking and, and negative thinking yeah so slight slight difference there yeah but the Orbed comes from, it's basically an, an, an acronym for the, the six behaviours that we're talking about, three of them being above the line, three of them being below the line. Which we'll, we'll touch on in a minute. And, and, yeah. and, and where, does it, where does it come from then, Jack? What, 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 who, because you know, we'll like to give plugs for people who came up with stuff where we can. Yes, and I'm sure they need the plug off us. <laughs> Probably sold multi-million yeah, copies yeah, of we'll the book. Get ready for a, get ready yeah. for a boost in sales. <laughs> exactly, and, yeah. And what about books and that, yeah. So it was, it was co-authored by uh, this American football coach, uni- uh, college, college, I was about to say university, um, Urban Myers. Who, uh, he wrote the book, uh, it's called Above the Line, uh, and then it's subtitled, I have to read this because... Because it's a it's, long title, yeah. isn't it? Lessons in Leadership and Life from a Championship Season. So it's, it's essentially this guy's an incredibly successful um, American football college coach. He's been to maybe three or four uni- uh, universities and, and absolutely kind of smashed the, all of the performance records at all of those, those various universities. And essentially it, he's boiled it down to a lot of, well, to a handful of tools that he uses, but, it, it, but what's interesting though is he, he wasn't graced with the biggest players, the strongest players, the best throwing quarterback. Mm-hmm. He, 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 from what I can gather, he, you know, you, I, you have the players at your disposal. You, you can't really influence that, yeah, to some degree. Absolutely, so it's about taking a a group of players, just like any other, and doing something extraordinary with them, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. And yeah. I think the the common Which theme is the of potency of this. It, you yeah, haven't got to change every, you haven't got to like sack your team and get a new team or yeah. you, you can turn things around with this tool. Can't Definitely, you? yeah. And I think at the heart of the book is this concept of culture and the culture is the, the most important thing and that can be, you know, that, that can't easily be changed and also it can't easily be, um, it can't easily be destroyed as well when you've got yeah. that kind of in, built, built in and, you know, talent go, comes and goes, but this is one of the things that, you know, in, in tactics, etc., game plans will all change over time, but culture is something that remains constant throughout yeah. the whole thing. I think there's, um, there's another American guy, but the, you know, um, the founder of BNI, Ivan Meisner, says culture reads strategy for breakfast. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you, you, can, you can have an unbelievable strategy, unbelievable game plan, all of the plays in American football, mm-hmm. but if you haven't got the right culture around the people who you're asking to fulfill or deliver, yeah. it doesn't matter. It makes no difference, mm-hmm. does it? Yeah, I mean, up until, sorry, I'm going to talk about football here, soccer. Soccer okay, for all American yeah. viewers. <laughs> something I know it's not one of your strong areas in general. How dare you? <laughs> but, but in terms of up until last this season, the round ball one. Yeah, the, yeah. the round ball one, the ones that like to fall over a lot. Yeah, yeah, those ones. But up until last season, like Man City, arguably were quite a massive underachievers for what the talent they had. But also, one of the things that was constant and was developing over time is the culture. And it's up until this season they've probably seen the benefits of that culture come to the fore, and they've won the yeah. treble. So. Yeah. They can't be doing too badly. I, I'll second that, yes. Yeah. Yeah, who's the manager? 
Who manages them? He's the guy who makes the decision. No, yeah, but who's well, the name? So yeah. I'm just for that. <laughs> um, right, so anyway, we talked about above the line, below the line. We said mm-hmm. OBED is an acronym. Yes. Let's start above the line, O. O A R. Yes. What? Where do we start then, Jack? So we've got ownership, yeah. we've got accountability, and we've got responsibility. So those are the three areas. And a lot of those words are used interchangeably, which is fair to say, uh, but they all do have slightly different meanings. So when we're talking about ownership, we're talking about kind of your personal investment in something, in a task. Your place within it. Mm-hmm, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And again, this is how it immediately comes into this idea that everyone can buy in. Because a lot of people will say, well, what do you mean ownership? The ownership sits with the top, like they're the ones that are... The book stops at the top, or all yeah, of those, yeah. Exactly, but actually if you can take ownership for your small part of it, so if we use like, again, accountancy, because it's easy for us to talk about like the person who's doing the data entry, the person who's putting in the, you know, the transactions, they still have ownership over their small tasks. Like it's not, the ownership doesn't fall with you know, the, the, the director at the top to make sure that that happens. Like you take the personal. Yeah, yeah, you know, the, the person doing the job might have someone above them whose job it is to make sure they get it right, mm-hmm. but you can still get it right yeah. at your point. Absolutely. Rather than just relying on, well, it's gonna get reviewed. You, yeah. You, you can still take that initial, um, you know, ownership of that point rather than just assume someone else is gonna catch you down the line, can't you? Yeah, definitely. And again, if you take more personal investment, take more pride in that small part that you do, the more likely you're gonna do it better and do it to your best of your abilities. Yeah. Which then plays into the wider goals and objectives of, of the business that you work for. So that was all ownership, accountability. Accountability, yeah, we've talked about this a lot. And responsibility, you know, you know a lot of people use these yeah, terms as the same training. thing, don't they? And when we're talking about account- accountability here, it's about the concept of being answerable for the decisions that you've made. And again, this immediately, we've, we've talked about it already in terms of accountability beforehand, that a lot of people assume accountabilities at the top. And it is in a lot of cases, but you can still have accountabilities at your level. Yeah. So provide, you, both, you still ultimately have to justify the decisions you make at whatever level you make. Like for example, you may be a relatively junior person in a sales team, you'll be accountable for whether the decision <coughs> you made not to call that client back, you know, when, when you said you would. Oh, it's it's or quarter. you forgot to mention the special offer, or you didn't yeah. say they could extend the payment plans, or yeah, you. That's within your mm-hmm. your task. You should so when, take ownership of it and be accountable for doing the things. So when own. someone else in the sales team turns around and you go, like, did you call that person back? Oh no, because it was like quarter to five, and I had to switch yeah. off my computer. They'll be like, is that really? Or classically, no, because you forgot to remind me. Yeah. What, what, what's, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I caught all that. I've called you them once. You were meant to call them. You should have called them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've called them once and they haven't called back. Like, yeah. well, no, that's not the point. We need to continue chasing them. So you're accountable for that decision that you make. So responsibility is the next one as well. And, 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 and again, it's about if you're responsible for something, you know, accepting you are responsible for it. Yeah. And, and ultimately delivering. Like the yeah. responsibility here is that you, the, the first two things have kind of written out a check for you and you need to actually deliver on that. Yeah. So actually you're understanding that you've got objectives to, to, to deliver on. And again, it's easier said than done. And everyone is, is responsible ultimately for those little things to happen. So, so this, all, um, this all might sound a bit woolly because all three of those, at, at first glance, well, you're just saying the same word three times. They're not, mm-hmm. and it is tricky to understand the difference yeah. between them and we accept that. But if we then go on to below the line, I think then the three words at the top, whether they are interchangeable or not, they're clearly distinguishable from the below the line. Aren't yeah, they? definitely. So we, we've done all, which is above. Bed is the below. Mm-hmm. Blame is the first one. So, well, you know, give us an example of that then, Jack. So, well, I'm going to blame you for stealing the, the introduction to bed because I wanted to do that. All right. Okay. Well, <laughs> you should have took ownership of that, then, didn't you? That's oh, it. sorry. Yeah, yes, yeah, I'll yeah. take yeah. accountability for it. <laughs> But yeah, so, 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 so blame though is, you know, silly little example there, because you were clearly at fault. Mm. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so, so when I talked earlier, you know, when I, when I gave this, the, 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 well, why did you not ring that? Well, you forgot to remind me. Well, no, 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 it was mm-hmm. your job to call that person. Yeah. You can't blame me for you not doing it. Yeah, absolutely. But that happens all the time, doesn't it? It does, People yeah. always try and blame something else, yeah, someone then. else, a machine, a tool, me alarm, what, like you blame something all the time. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because in the, at the end of the day, no one likes to feel like they're the one who's at fault. But it was them. Yeah. 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 That, they all, that they've done something other than doing something perfectly. Yeah. Like, that it's a natural reaction that people will leap to that. Could be, because because in, in maybe it's a bit premature here, then, but the reason people go below is to try and free themselves mm -hmm. of being responsible for the thing not happening, yeah. isn't it? It's, it's much it's, more easy to go, oh, I wish I could have done something about this, mm -hmm. but there's nothing at all I could have done because Dave didn't send me the email. Yeah, oh. it's, it's a defence mechanism at the yeah. end of the day. Like Immediately, like when the chips are down, it's like, well, right, okay, I don't want to be the one here, you know, left in the lurch, so I'm going to have to find some, well, some way of extric yeah. Yeah, extricating myself so, out of this. So, and again, again, we'll come on to why this might exist in a workplace, because I think that's an important part of this, mm. which, which may or may not be in our extensive notes, but... Of course. Um, e. Excuses. Excuses. So okay. we'll let you do that then, gracious. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I'll just cut across here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's a slight nuance again on blame, but again, it's ultimately just coming up with reasons why. The yeah. instructions weren't yeah. clear or... Yeah. yeah. So, so, so again, I count that, uh, you know, the blame, well, mm -hmm. you, did, you never asked me to do it, excuse, yeah. the instructions weren't clear. They didn't pick up, if they didn't answer the phone. If you had to do something and, yeah, and they didn't respond, blah, blah, like, mm -hmm. you still knew it needed done. So somebody yeah. who takes such ownership and accountability of these things mm -hmm. will find a way to do it despite those things happening, won't they? Yeah. Well, so, so we have to submit people's tax returns by 31st of January. Oh, we've emailed them twice. Oh, well, that's enough. You no, know, mm -hmm. well, get on the phone, mm -hmm. write them a letter, check their email, you know, ring someone else in there for trying. You find a way to do it when you take ownership, mm -hmm. don't you? Because I find that when you, in that scenario there, you have two scenarios where you get the same bad result, but one of them you come out looking great because it's like, yeah. well, I rang him. We pulled out all the stops. Yeah. There, there was actually nothing else we yeah, could have done. Yeah, you can't, we, you we, can't. They can't feasibly come back and say, well, I didn't know. They're like, well, well, until you've exhausted everything. Yeah, I've yeah. got 25 voicemails, 17 emails, three letters to say that... And I've not done it all twice. Yeah, yeah so well, you can't say that. What, whilst, what more could you reasonably expect? Yeah. yeah, whilst on the other side, it's phoning it in, sending two emails and not following them up. What, what, in that example, what if it's like, it's a, you know, a box ticket exercise. Well, yeah, it says chase twice, I've chased twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... It also says get the thing done. Yeah, you've you've stopped at the minimum level of effort there. Exactly. So what, what's what's the final part here then? What's the D at the bottom of the bed? It's denial. Denial. So it never happened. That yeah. wasn't my like. That, yeah. I I disagree. We haven't failed here. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or I've fundamentally, you know, I don't. Yeah. As you said, I, I didn't feel like we've we've done anything wrong here. Or there's yeah. not an issue here. I haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. It's someone else. Again, it, it, they, it, similar to the above. They all ones, fall they all, into single sentences, all yeah. three, isn't it? Yeah, they yeah. generally kind of coalesce into somewhere in between yeah. and all, all three factors are generally. We haven't let the client down because it wasn't late and yeah. they didn't reply and, and yeah, actually exactly. the IT went down. Oh, well, it's one sentence with, a, <laughs> all, with the whole bed covered yeah, You could play a game of kind of denial bingo and yeah. see all <laughs> they all come up at once. So this, 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 so there's a, there's a great um, guy in the accountancy world called James Ashford who drops another D on there. I don't know if you've seen this, but he, he, he has another D drama. Or bed. Or bed. <clears throat> and, he, and he talks about the idea that people will also make up their own assumed drama as to why it was somebody else's fault. Mm -hmm. Or they didn't reply because they hate me. And yeah. So, and, and I, in, in, since or because he's that, incompetent. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah. They, and they make up their own reason not only are they blaming someone else, making an excuse and denying it was a problem, but mm -hmm. then also making their own drama up to yeah. to back themselves up. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think as soon as you start doing that, you know you're on a, yeah. a pretty weak foot, don't you? Yeah, and it's, it's a lot about self-talk. So that's you trying to convince yourself ultimately yeah. that you've got nothing wrong. You've done nothing yeah, wrong. Yeah. Oh, it was definitely yeah. wasn't my fault. Because actually there, the, yeah. hold on, once you start mm -hmm. putting, Assuming things about yeah. other people's state of mind involved, like, well, then yeah. you're definitely clutching, aren't you? Mm -hmm. um, Jack, the thing I was going to come back to is, so, so again, one of my favourite books, which anyone who's watched more than three episodes of this will know, is Black Box Thinking by Matthew Syed. Yep. And he talks about why certain environments 
create people who have the below the line thinking. And, and, and it, it feels like you're more likely to try and blame someone else, make excuses or deny the issue in the first place if you think you're going to get into trouble for being honest. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a link here or? Definitely, I was going to say in terms of like the culture where you get penalised for making a mistake. I mean that and naturally. You'll avoid admitting you had a part, yeah. it, won't you? So that's, you're, you're immediately going like, well, oh God, something's gone wrong here. So that your first natural reaction is to be like, right, okay. It, was, it definitely wasn't me. Yeah, I yeah. don't care what happened, it wasn't me. Yeah, yeah. I was on holiday then. <laughs> and once, you, once you've opened mm -hmm. with that, it's, it's quite hard to backtrack, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's very, very hard to then go, yeah, fair point, it was me. So I, I, I suppose the first thing is you should, you know, we talked about you know, having open and honest communications with team members when we talked yeah. the other week about how to stop your staff leaving. And, you know, you, you need that open, frank discussion to be able to take place where someone goes, mm -hmm. actually, Jack, I've, I've dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. it was me did it, can we work together as to how I'm going to avoid that next time rather than actually shit Jack's going to sack us um, I'll deny everything about this mm -hmm. because if he finds out then I'm gone and sometimes people have got that in for good reason because they are in a workplace where that would happen Yeah. but also I think that other times it's just I think it's probably not the case they're probably not going to get the sack from <laughs> yeah again and that's, and owning up to it. yeah and that's the drama again like going yeah. like, oh my God, like, if I admit this, then they're gonna, they're gonna sack me, they hate me, yeah. I've completely ruined it in reality. Like, it's not, it's not a bigger deal as you like to think. Because what's interesting as well is, um, you know, there's, the, the, there's two reasons why things don't happen in the workplace. Either people are ignorant of the real thing they should have done, which I think is then a training issue, mm -hmm. if, if I haven't taught you. And the other one is, is it incompetence? I can't remember the two eyes, but, well, you're just not up to the job, which again is a training issue. So you can mm -hmm. kind of argue, despite saying the book shouldn't always just stop at the top. You know, if, if, if you're not capable of doing the job, the, you're, you're, you're the person above you should really identify yeah. that and train and, and sort and that out, shouldn't they? Again, and that's, and that's why the best way of kind of introducing all bad is, is by kind of breaking down those, those maybe those difficult cultural barrier, barriers that may have fallen, like naturally kind of just appeared in, in the organization and it's encouraging self-reflection and that starts from the top. So in, the mistake may have happened three tiers below kind of the leader's level, but still they have to go, well, what could I have done to ensure that that didn't happen? Yeah. So they go and go like, well, this is how I could have taken more ownership, more accountability, more responsibility. And that encourages people to look up and go, all right, that's interesting. Like, they're not just running around blaming everyone, sacking yeah. people left, right, and so yeah. 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 So, so in, in, in the training example, well, if you've got a team member who just keeps making the same mistake, mm -hmm. at some point, they're either maliciously, purposely not doing it, mm -hmm. or they're trying and your training wasn't good enough. Yeah. But either way, it's, you know, mm -hmm. at some point you have to go, well, I need to sort them out either way. They either need to go because they're just not yeah. gonna do it. It's, you know, it, it, it's malice or whatever. Um, or I need to accept that maybe I'm not being as clear as I should be. Absolutely, yeah. And, the and below you, that self-reflection has to happen if you're going to try and yeah, because that natural blow the line reaction is like it's not a training issue because I've shown him ten times already. It must be a problem. It must and be I'm an a, issue for and me. I'm a good trainer. Yeah, <laughs> and I, this is how I got taught how to do it. And I it's funny how the saboteurs time. never come in when relocate and blame, isn't it? No. You never have that self-doubt. Maybe I'm not a very good trainer. No. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, it's definitely Dave's fault. I've yeah, exactly. The judge, the judge will bat you up there. No, no, it's fine. It's not you. I left him a post-it note with four words on it. It was clear what I wanted. Yeah. yeah. And I misspelled three of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so what, you know, you, you mentioned earlier as well, though, Jack, about a common mistake of this being, you know, where it falls within a hierarchy. But to be fair, this isn't just a work or a job thing, is it? This is life. This yeah. is raising kids, whether you whether you your dog's house trained, this is, you know, mm -hmm. whether your grass is too like everything's yeah. You, you can apply this to almost anything, can't you? If Definitely. not everything. Yep, absolutely. The grass, for example, it's not my fault. It's the weather's fault. Yeah. Lost my keys in yeah. the grass. Ah, the grass is too long. You didn't <laughs> cut the grass, did you? Yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah. So I mean what 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 do we who, who should take this on and, and and it feels weird asking like you know who should take this on but if you're a leader and you spot your team thinking below the line 
what, how, how do you get them to realize this? Do you just kind of all need to go, right, we're going to use this warbed model when we're talking about anything going mm-hmm. forward, and we're all going to call each other out? I mean, is, is, is it as simple as that? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've rolled it out internally with a couple of our departments where they, they felt like that was a particular issue. Uh, there's a lot of... Well, they couldn't work out who to blame. <laughs> <laughs> so we've... So, uh, yeah, and that's very much it becomes a collective thing. I mean, it, obviously there needs to be buy-in from the leader. Uh, if the leader lets people slide or doesn't live it themselves... Or blames, makes yeah, excuses and denies. Exactly. Yeah. Then obviously it's going to fail. Yeah. But it, it is a collective thing. And it, although we say it's not a leadership tool, it does need to come from the leadership because I feel like the most powerful way of implementing it is when the leader comes out and when, when a, a bollock has been dropped and goes like, right, well, this is how I feel like I could have done it. And ultimately that, although it may ultimately be a mistake, it's still a good use of all bed. Because the best case scenario is that you encourage the person who actually physically made the mistake to go, hey, yeah, my bad. Because, because the, 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 this is the important point here, you'll only learn from mistakes if you admit you made a mistake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you go, well, I couldn't have done anything. You'll go home and you'll sleep sound and you'll not change. Because mm-hmm. you don't oh. you don't kid yourself in that way, but know that you've done it. Mm-hmm. You, you know you think, oh, I've, yeah, I successfully passed that book. I'm clear. You yeah. know, you, you're not lying awake going, well, it really was me. Well, likewise, if <laughs> your boss comes in and shouts at you for doing something wrong, the natural inclination is, okay, well, that's not very fair. I, I, mean, I, I, I the most polite way is that going, like, that's not yeah. that's not on me. That surely that's that's their fault, not mine. Yeah, and you don't necessarily get the the self reflection that you need in order to ensure that that mistake doesn't happen again. Yeah, in, in reality, you're more like you're going to irritate the person that you've just shouted at, or upset them, or withdraw them, and they're going to do less. It's better, become, yeah, it's become just... more cautious or more more unsure of themselves. That ultimately they'll be like they'll take on less responsibility and less accountability and less ownership. Because they think they're going to get unfairly gonna, punished for yeah. yeah for things that they yeah they feel like they control. they may have thought that they were putting their head about the paraffin and doing above and beyond and if you do that and turns out and you get told off for it you're like why the hell am I going to do that then we 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 did an interesting exercise years ago Jack and I don't know if you were here then at the time but we had an away day and we did a really interesting exercise where there was three boards. And on one board, you had to put the things that you knew you could control within your. It, yeah, I think this rings a bell. Work, you know, within your mm-hmm. role. Yeah. There was then things you thought, well, they're not within my control, absolutely, but the things I can influence. And mm-hmm. then there was a, the, the third board was the things that you could not influence or control, and could only be done by your mm-hmm. superior. Yeah. And it was quite interesting because I think we did that, and we asked. I think the team members did it first, and I think we as partners at the time talked about it and said, oh, we're absolutely happy for you to do these things. And what actually happened was a lot of the things that were thought to be out of the area of influence and control were kind of shunted along. And there's mm-hmm. actually relatively few things where it was like, no, no, you can't do that, you're right. Yeah. Um, these, when we were talking earlier, these things felt like they were kind of within the same thing because it would be quite easy to say, well, I know you, you would put, you've you expected me to do that, hence you're frustrated, you're shouting at me. But that's, no, I, can't, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. It, like, do people let themselves off quite easily? Because they kind of go, oh, well, I'll, I'll persuade myself that I, I'm not allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. And therefore, it's unreasonable to expect me to have done it. Yeah. Or, or the, it's the, like, it feels like there's an overlap here somewhere. Yeah, I feel what an important factor of this is context. Like, if you've been told at the outset what the expectations are of you in terms of we want you to be proactive and again all beds all about proactivity yeah if we want we expectation is to be proactive you know looking at being reliable and that expectation is being laid out to you then it shouldn't come as a surprise when it turns out that you haven't that you're going to be held accountable for it yeah but in that if that context hasn't been laid and your your understanding of your role against your superiors understanding what your role is and that's where a lot of ambiguity starts and that's where where a lot of this below the line behavior sits in terms of yeah. denial like it's not my job excuses well you didn't tell me to do that just trying to cover your back for yeah. the inadequacy of the 
allocation of duties properly within the hierarchy, for instance. Yeah. So, you know, well, actually, I never told anyone that. Well, I'll blame them mm -hmm. for not. Why did you not step up? Well, mm -hmm. last time I stepped up, I got told enough for that as well. It's like, yeah. that, there's got to be a proper discussion of roles, hierarchy, who does what, when, yeah. what good is, what bad is. And if you, if, if you had a HR person here instead of me, I think 95% of any HR issues arise from, well, they didn't like performance related stuff. Generally, the first question they ask is, well, did he tell him that? Or was that made clear to them? And, and for, from my understanding, quite a high percentage of it is no. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, so I, that's I where... I, 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 it, well, especially if there's multiple people in a team, it's like, you know, Dave, why aren't you doing this thing that your other four teammates are doing? Mm -hmm. oh, well, it's not, well, I've never been asked to do it. Why yeah. would I just assume? Yeah. Like it's a reasonable assumption that you've asked them to do it, but you haven't asked me to do it. Why, yeah. why would I just volunteer mm -hmm. to do something? And it's hard because- Th it's, it's There's the definitely example, a balancing line because certainly those four people might have proactively done it and be like, amazing. Which is good and you want mm -hmm. that behavior, but, yeah. then, but then the manager should go, oh, you know, Dave, do you mind doing mm -hmm. a bit of that as well then? Rather than but, just tell them off for not doing it. Yeah, but for, yeah, through good management, a lot of that stuff should come out in the wash because yeah. you start talking about, well, Generally, when you're talking about pay, unfortunately, but like they'll be looking at like, well, these four people are getting paid more than me. Oh, because they do this. Oh, right. They, so they, should I start doing they that? They do more yeah. than you. Yeah. We'll exactly. try and do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you do that, then we can revisit to have this conversation again. Yeah. So it's there's still ways around it, and it, it relies on proper management as well. You know, to really promote that self-reflection and self-awareness on how you can improve, and also how. The, you know the business can help you improve as well have you got any examples and this 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 might not be a fair drop on you have you got any examples of where you've seen someone just doubling down and then again on on, on the, the the bed side of this and just not accepting it all quite hard to, <laughs> on the bed side <laughs> yeah quite hard to, to get into someone I mean I, I know we, I, I know I used to work with a business where where, 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 where the MD and the directors, the, you know, the, the directors had an awful time because the MD would quite often just keep changing their mind on things without necessarily communicating. Mm -hmm. Would then say, you know, the classic blame, well, well, we haven't succeeded because you guys aren't doing your job, etc. Yeah. And it was just, and it was a continuous niggle that, you know, for all I know, has never been resolved. Um, and to be fair, that was because the leader just wouldn't take ownership for, for what they were meant to be owning. Mm -hmm. it, 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 I presume you've seen examples on this when you're working with businesses where it's just not resolved because people will not take ownership. Yeah, and it's um, hence why it's, it's it's a behavioral tool. So it's, it's kind of, again, it's a lot of attitudes towards leaders or business owners to their employees a lot of them will see them as work shy lazy people <laughs> at the worst at the worst you end. should be mind readers yeah <laughs> exactly and they should be doing exactly what i say to tell them to do even though i haven't told them to do it what i thought they should be doing because that's the paradox here isn't it it's like just do what i'm telling you but also be proactive show initiative and yeah. be proactive it's like but also i'll tell you off for doing something i didn't tell yeah. you it's like uh, yeah, and, and you just got people who are just they're, they're rabbits in headlights, aren't they? Yeah, and you're like, I can't do right for wrong because you, there's no consistency there. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, well, I did this for this on this job, but then the next job, I did did the exact same thing that you wanted me to do, and that's the wrong and thing. And that's to do. an all bed issue at the, mm -hmm. at the top level in that example, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, they, they they should accept that they're not mm -hmm. gonna, ever going to get the best out of their next, you know, their, their leadership team, the people below them, because they're not given that plan. Mm -hmm. But similarly, the, what the best case scenario out of that is the person below holding the person above accountable. Very, very nice in practice. In reality, it's very difficult to do. It's quite hard to tell your boss that. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm just, to let you know, just not having it. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not feeling like we're getting, I'm getting, doing this things, not doing things consistently because on this job I did it this way and, and you said it was wrong and I should do it this way. So the, the next time I did it the way you wanted me to do it and you told me it was wrong. So yeah. I need some consistency here. I need to steer from you. It's, and it's quite hard. It, it's easy if you're a leader to say, well, we're going to put time aside, make sure we've got good relationships, have proper one to ones, appraisals, catch up. It's quite hard to lead that 
it, you know, it's quite hard to force that from the person above you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if they're just not game for it. Mm -hmm. Or if they're, you know, tick boxing the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Any issues? No, good. Well, actually, no, no, fine. Okay. <laughs> I'll take your millisecond silence as a. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I presume everything's okay, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Good. But I've already signed. I've already filled this in. Good. Yeah. 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 So it's it's quite funny, Jack. How often we just keep coming back to the same things about open, proper discussions and on, you know, and yeah. having a good relationship with your with your team. It's mm -hmm. like it's almost We're, like that's really important, and is at the heart almost, of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Because that's how you start to build your culture. But I know, I because I certainly know within the directorship team at, at RL, I, I think we're starting to get pretty good at just going, you know, no, that's not that never really happened though, did it? Because mm -hmm. we're we're close, we communicate quite a lot, and, and it certainly feels better than probably five, ten year ago when. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure we really live, breathe this, you know. Yeah, I think we knew a lot of the ideas, but we never really. Yeah, and just that's kind of it in. That's what I've been very conscious on since I've kind of taken on this role is that you've got to live and breathe it yourself. You can't tell other businesses to do it whilst you're not doing it. <laughs> it's somewhat of a hypocrisy. Yeah. So it's something that I'm actively working on myself, and obviously, the help with the help with like the other RL directors and stuff. It's you know. It has been really interesting and there's been a lot of growth in that area. I feel like we're bl blowing our own trumpets here. Oh, well, we are awesome, to be fair. Yeah, and exactly. Then if anything goes wrong, it normally is somebody else's fault. Yeah, definitely. And on, and on that note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, where would people start on this though, Jack? Just because if, 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 I shouldn't assume, but I was going to say, what's the thing everyone gets wrong on this? And I presume it's that not enough people are aware of this. Yeah, it's a pretty basic concept. It, it, it's not complex, is it? No, it isn't. And it's universal. It's people from every level of your team can, can implement it in some way. And it's just so universal. You can kind of touch on it there. Like you can use it personally. But also life. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. my kid never did the homework. Mm. You also randomly take them to the cinema and then bring them home late at night when there's no time to do the homework. So you, you like, yeah. if you want your kid to do the homework every night, mm -hmm. make sure there's a time every night for them to do the homework. Yeah. Because as the adult, you control what happens in your house. Exactly. And, and you like, let them sit there in front of the TV for two hours. Yes. You sat and watched them because it was easier for you not to make them do the homework. Well, yeah. So it's it's not just teams, it's not just workplaces, it's it's everywhere, isn't it? Yeah. So it's kind of increasing awareness, introducing this into your team into, as a concept. And it's just slowly kind of ad adopting that into work, you know, into your work day, and into your environment, into you know, into the the scenarios that hit. I mean, it's it's so easy to slip into those below the line things. Yeah. And to be fair, we've touched on that. I think with the with the self sabotage stuff. I think Cause they're all not, trying to chip away. And yeah, saying, here's a good excuse. Use this <laughs> excuse. <laughs> but it's Blame Dave. I suppose the point is that it's not necessarily a bad thing to have that initial reaction where you're a bit irritated. You're like. Oh, and like slip into it. Can't believe they've done that. Because it's mm. almost, it's almost like your hand on the stove sort of thing. Like that's yeah. good. It it awakens you to how you feel. But then at that point is kind of that's when you do the self reflection and go right. Okay, let's let's look at the all bed model. Right. I'm clearly I'm clearly clearly something hasn't gone right here. So I have two options here. I can either go above the line or below the line. Do you think you need a as a leader, though, to, to really get this to bed in, do you think you need to give your team permission to call you on this? Absolutely, yeah. I think... So I think that's quite important. I think you could stand up as a leader and go, you know, this is all better, we're going to follow this all day long, great. And mm -hmm. I got that, yeah, great. But if you don't say, and if I'm below the line, I want you to tell me. Yeah. And I won't be annoyed because I mm -hmm. want you to tell me. Yeah. I, th I think you need to expressly give that permission to, for each other to call out, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And if you can get that, then I think you're halfway there already. If yeah. you've got that relationship with your team that you, they feel comfortable to call you out on stuff, then arguably you probably don't need all that. Yeah, <laughs> unless but it's probably more than a management Unless you're tool. a pushover of the boss. And <laughs> yeah, but then it's probably more of a management yeah. tool for the people within your team who are, 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 are below the line. Mm -hmm. In which case it's a good way. You, you might instinctively know these things, yeah. but without a model to then put in front of someone and go, yeah. Right. This is this is this is what I think you're doing. And mm -hmm. Why? Um, so if you have instinctively got it, and you're in a good place. Then fine. You might not need it, but it's certainly a good way to explain to people coming in. By the way, we're above the line thinkers. Yeah. 
So Nick and I, when we shared a room years ago, we, we literally had this on the wall. And we'd kind of like pointed it if we spotted each other doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's just a good way to just have a shortcut to it. Yeah. And after you hit your other head with a chair, after you've pointed it, you've got on fine. <laughs> Stop talking about bloody Obed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I, I do like me. I do like me latest trends and crazes. Uh, yeah, I mm. loved Obed. I still, to be honest, I think it's yeah. it's one of the most powerful tools. And, and often when you've got people who just don't seem to be able to work well together, I, I, I think this is a great place to start on any mm -hmm. team building. It's yeah. Like we're going to have it with open conversation where we point out if anyone is below the line. And I think if you can get that at the start of any team building session, mm -hmm. it's really put quite powerful. Yeah, I mean, if you can get buy-in, then that's, again, it kind of sets the expectations. Yeah. So someone shouldn't get irritated when they and have they an get, outburst and somebody yeah. taps on the wall and goes, so yeah. you're just like, oh, bugger off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a natural well, reaction, yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, you got me, all right. Yeah. But none of those does that, they go, no, no, but, but, yeah. yeah, and at which point, yeah, you've just ticked off the second one of your <laughs> on the bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Well, listen, Jack, it's always always good. That's the all bed model. Um, it'd be great to know if you've used all bed in practice, or if you're now going to use it. What what, what issues do you think it's going to resolve? Um, yeah. As always, we appreciate your feedback, your comments, and we hope you enjoy that.